Hi everyone, Nicholas Buffy this here from Sunny Cypress and welcome to today's tutorial. And as you can see, I've dug out another paper three and this one is the specimen paper. It basically means it's focused on the new syllabus from 2023 onwards. So this is a really interesting paper and a paper you should be comfortable with and all the skills which are involved in this paper. Now, I do try to keep these tutorials as short as possible, but I do want to make sure that I give you alternative ways to do certain tasks which are required for the paper. And that sometimes means that I might make a mistake or two. So make sure you call me out on those mistakes. It just means that you're paying attention. So let's get cracking with this paper. So first, let's have a look at the question paper. So we can see this is the specimen paper for 2023. And uh, we can scroll down and here we go. So it says you have been supplied with the following source file. So first thing is to check and make sure we have all the source files that they've given us. And here they are. Then task one, evidence document, create a, word, a new word process document. Make sure your name, center number and candidate number will appear on every page of this document. Save this evidence document in your work area with the file name spec evidence. I'm just gonna copy that. So just a quick shortcut followed by your candidate number, for example, spec evidence 9999, um, you will need this file later. Okay, let's get started. So first thing is in my folder, I'm gonna right click, go to new, create a new word document, paste what I had there, and then just add my candidate number. I'm just gonna put one, two, three, four, press enter. Doesn't say where my details should appear. So I'm just going to add them in the header. Oh, there we go, there's my word document. Uh, so double click in the header area here and just type your details. There we go. Now click back into the main area of the document. Just click on save and we'll minimize that so we can access it later. Okay, let's go to the question paper. So that was the first part. Task two, web page. Now, remember, always important to read um, these little bits at the top because they do have important information sometimes. So it says here, a trainee has started to create a web page and style sheet for Tawara Digital Storage. These must be suitable for uploading to a web server. Create a new folder called that. I was just going to copy that. Locate the following files and store them in your spec underscore HTML folder. I'm just going to do that very quickly now. So file, new folder. Um, there's the name and I'm going to identify the file. So it's spec disks, that one, just one click. And then I want spec style, spec style one and spec web page. So I'm just going to cut these and I always suggest you cut these, um, remove them from the root folder just to make sure you don't access the, uh, the file from the wrong location. And you can keep a backup or whoever is going to be vigilating you or your teacher that will be able to give you the source files if you need them again. So you can get the source files if you do lose them or damage them in any way. Okay, so here are my files there. We're just going to go back. There we go. Okay, let's read through this now. Open the file specdisks.jpg in a suitable application. Okay, so my suitable application is going to be Photoshop. Reflect the image horizontally. Save this image as disk1.jpg in your spec HTML folder. Okay, so since I have to save it at this point, I'm not going to read the rest of this right now. I'm just going to do this action. So let's go to here. And I'm going to go to my spec disks here. Right click. Oh, it's got, ah, okay. Um, open with. You can see an SSD and a hard disk there. Okay, so Photoshop is opening on this screen, let's just drag it up. Okay, there we go. So let's just drag this window up. There we go. Okay, so there's my image. And the first task was to reflect the image horizontally. So I'm going to go to image, rotation, image, rotation, and we're going to flip horizontally. And, there we, and I save this as disk1.jpg. So because I've opened this from the root folder, I'm going to go to save a copy and it should say automatically find the folder where I want to save everything. So I'm going to call that disk one, small letters, no space, enter. It doesn't say anything about the quality. So just click on OK. And that's that. Now I can go to the question paper again. Rotate the image disk one.jpg 90 degrees clockwise. 
Okay, save this image as this too. So again, I'm going to be saving this. So I'm just going to do this straight away. So from here, I'm going to go to image, image rotation again, and I'm going to go 90 degrees clockwise. There we go. Okay, so that's basically made the solid state drive readable. Okay, and I save that as this too. File, save a copy, and I'm just going to click on that and change that to disk two. And click OK. There we go. All right, let's go back to the question paper. Now, crop the image this two dot jpg so that all the solid state drive is visible with an equal amount of red background on each side. This image must be square. So that's very important there. It has to be square. Do not distort the image. The hard disk drive must not be visible. Save this image as disk three in your spec folder. Okay. And the last one here says resize the image disk three to become 600 by 600 pixels. So that's square, isn't it? 600 by 600. Save this image as that in your spec folder. All right. So I might as well do this now. Um, I, I think I've got two methods of doing this. So let's get cracking with this one. So the first thing I'm going to do, I need to just basically crop this and make sure that it's square. So I'm just going to choose the square or the rectangular marquee tool here. And here's a trick. If I just draw over it, I, I can see those dimensions there and I can try and adjust them so that they're exactly equal. And this is really tricky to do. OK, but if you hold the shift button on your keyboard, then it will only create a square. Can you see those numbers are always proportional for a square? I can't deform it. So that's one way. So I'm just going to draw a square over that. Let go. I'm going to move that marquee with the arrow buttons on my keyboard so that it's actually proportional on both sides. And then I can just do a quick crop image crop. There we go. So I've got now a square. I'm going to go file, save as, and we're going to call that disk three. Now it didn't say anything about the size or the dimension. So there we go. And it didn't say anything about how many pixels. Now this next one says in the question paper, it says that it has to be 600 by 600 pixels. So I can just press control D to get rid of that selection there very quickly. Um, so I'm just going to go to image, image size, and this is already a square, but it's not 600 by 600. I'm going to make sure this link here is clicked. Okay, so that basically means if I click on that, you can see these two lines here linking the width and the height. So if I change that one to 600 pixels, as soon as I click on OK, it's going to change that picture so that the size is 600 by 600. And that's perfect. OK, so I'm just going to save that now with the name that it told me, which is spec SSD. I'll just copy that. We go file, save as or save a copy. And we're just going to call that spec. Spec SSD. Save. Now. I could have done this another way as well. I mean, the other way to do it. So I've saved those. So I'm just going to show you an alternative method here. So I'm just going to go undo, 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 and there we go. So where I was from this point, where I wanted to actually draw the square, I could have used the crop tool directly. And using the crop tool, I can change up here the values. So I need to make sure it's width and height. Change these to 600 by 600, and then change the cropping size and move that so that lands in there. And as soon as I press Enter, my image will now be, if I check image, image size, it's 600 by 600. So I would save that as disk three, and then I would save it again as spec SSD, because it doesn't really say what size square disk three should be. So that would have been a, a little shortcut. But just to show you how you can use the cropping tool, I'll show you that method as well. OK, so go back to the question paper. Display the contents of your spec HTML folder showing the folder name, image dimensions, all file names, file extensions, and file sizes. Take a screenshot and put this in your evidence document. Okay, so I can go back here. I can close this now. I don't need this anymore. And here's my folder. Now, what I need to do, I'm going to get rid of the preview. Now, there's a two ways that you can do this. Now, I've had quite a few people ask me, how do I get the dimensions to show videos and pictures? So 
Here we go. We'll go over this again quickly. The one method is if you go to view and use the content view, it should give you the file type and it will also give you the dimension of the picture but you can see on some of them it doesn't so what we can do is instead of using content we use view details and then we right click on one of these heading tabs at the top so if I right click on this one for example I've got here the option for more and now I can see all the details which I can add to my Explorer here I want dimensions so let's go down to D, dimensions, select it, click OK, and there are the dimensions for all my pictures. Okay, and if there was any property there which was missing, so I want um, folder name, so I've got the folder name at the top, there it is there. Image dimensions, well here are the dimensions, all file names, file extensions, so I've got the type, that's the extension there, I just need to extend that there so it's all visible, so we don't get anything cut off, and file sizes and I've also got the size. so I've got everything I need here so what I'm going to do I'm going to take a quick screenshot with my snipping tool click on new and I need to make sure that I'm going to take a screenshot which is going to include have a look the folder name here and here and we can see all the information now again I'm going to say this again I'm using dark mode it's not preferable that you use dark mode, but you can, if you want to, just double check when you're looking at your printouts, because it's in dark mode, just make sure it's easily readable, okay? Make sure the printout is clear. If it is, it's fine. Right, so I'm just gonna paste that there. I'm gonna call that EV1 and paste. There we go. Click on save, and now I can move on. Okay, so we're now down to what looks like CSS. Okay. The style sheet is not finished and contains a number of it all. Now, as soon as I see this thing here where it says a style sheet contains errors straight away in my mind, what I'm thinking is just delete what's inside that style sheet. You're going to edit the style sheet, make sure that you use the most efficient methods all color codes must be in hexadecimal. Heading styles four, five, and six do not need do not need defining. Okay, so why is it saying that? Um, make sure that your style sheet contains no HTML. Open the style sheet spec style.css. Right. Well, before we do that, I just want to have a look and see what it is that we've got here. So it says all table borders and grid lines are visible. Okay, so that will mean that um, I need to make those borders either solid or whatever it says. Table. Size is 90% width of the browser window, not collapse, width, two pixels, solid, and the border color this. All right. Table data. This is going to be the TD. Um, cell padding is that. Okay, so we've got different cell padding values for top, bottom, left, and right. And then it says borders, width, two pixels, solid, border color that. And that's the same as these. And that. So I need to put the, so that's where the efficient programming techniques come in. I'm going to put one, uh, one property there, which is going to be for table and TD with that information there. All heading styles. Color is the, all heading styles. Ah, that's why up here it had the four, five, and six do not de need defining. So I need to define only headings one, two, and three. There you go, now it makes sense. Um, have to be Times New Roman, but if this is not uh, available, then Times, or if these fonts are not available, the browser's default serif. Heading one has got a different property. So these are going to be headings one, two, and three together for all heading styles. And then different property for H1, H2, H3. And this is something I noticed when I was reading quickly through this paper. Here you need to define a class, okay? Something we have which we haven't really seen or haven't seen often. So let's begin with this. Let's jump over. I'm going to open up. Um, it's called spec style. Now, please be careful. Can you see I've got the spec style and the spec style one? You need to be really careful that you're opening the right one. So I'm going to right click on this, open with. I'm going to choose a dope Dreamweaver. It's opened it there. There we go. And look at that. Straight away, I can see this is 
This is a whole load of guys. So they said there were some errors, but there's not some. There's a whole load of them. But you can see it's actually got table, data, cell padding, borders, all headings. Now nah, it's just written yet. Yeah, so I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Gone. And that. Okay. And what else I'm going to do is I'm going to start. So let's just open up my CSS designer, make sure that's available. So if you don't have CSS Designer, just make sure you go to Window and click on CSS Designer. All right, so we're going to begin. And I'm going to be going backwards and forwards from the question paper to uh, the CSS. So the first step is, it said the table size uh, should be 90% of the width of the browser window. So first one is I'm going to just click on the selector, add one, table, enter, enter. And from here, I've got my table property here. There you go, width, I'm going to make that 90%. So go to percentage and just click on that and make it 90. And there it is there. And then it says it borders not collapsed. So I'm going to go to my borders. And down here where it says border collapse, we're going to choose not collapse. We're going to choose separate. So there's that first property. I'm then going to go to uh, the TD. Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll do the TD first, which was the cell padding. So if we have a look here, um, I'm going to do these ones here first. And then I'm going to do the ones which are joined together with table. So for the TD, I'm just going to type this one in TD, open the braces. And then it says uh, cell padding top is eight pixels. So if we click over here, we're going to look at cell padding. The top one is eight pixels. It's already on PX, but if it wasn't, you could click and choose a different value so we want pixels left and right it says is 20 there we go 20 and the bottom is six okay so there we've got the TD and now I'm going to do um, what well, my efficient programming technique I'm just going to put here table comma in fact I'll do this yeah, just for the sake of it using Dreamweaver I'm going to type table. Now you could put table comma TD here. You could add the TD later. It really doesn't matter. There you go. And so I want the width of the border to be two pixels. So we're going to go to our borders. And we're going to put here, the width is going to be two pixels. The style is going to be solid. And the color is, now it's got the color 8, 80 and 8,000. So 80, 88,000, 88, there we go. And press enter. So this is everything which is table and TD. Okay, we're going to go to all heading styles. Now, all heading styles except for 4, 5 and 6, it said. So I'm just going to type that one in, H1, comma, H2 comma H3. So all the heading styles, open the braces, um, should be, now it, be careful with the coloring guys, it should be red, green and blue. It's actually got the blue, then the red, then the green. So it should be FF, FF, zero, zero. So we're going to go to our color of the font and we're going to put here FF, FF, zero, zero. Enter. Then it says the font should be Times New Roman. If that's not available, then Times. And if that's not available, the default sans serif. Uh, sorry, the default serif font. So I'm going to go to font family. I'm just going to choose anyone that finishes with serif. Uh, there you go, the first one there. And then I'm just going to delete everything that I don't need. So I don't need all of that. Oh, I've got the Times New Roman there already. That's really good. So I want the first one is Times New Roman. So I'm going to go all the way to here. Now, remember, if the font name has got spaces like Times New Roman has, you need to put in speech marks. If it doesn't have spaces, it doesn't need the speech marks. So if Times is not Times New Roman is not available, it said Times, comma, and there we go. OK, so the first one will be Times New Roman. If that's not available, then it will be Times. And if that's not available, then the default Siri font. I hope I'm doing this correct. I haven't missed something out. Next one, H1 should be 48 points high and the alignment to the right. So we'll do this this way, H1, enter, enter. It should be 
go to the text. We're going to go to size, 48 points. So we're going to choose PT for points. I can just click in there, 48 points high and right aligned. There we go. H2 is 24 points high. So I'm just going to put here H2, open the braces, and that should be, I'm just going to copy that line there just to make it a bit easier for me. And that should be 24. And then I can copy that. Control C for H3. And H3, it says 18 points high. So I'm just going to change that to 18. Okay, so you can use these simple techniques of copy paste just to make your life uh, a little bit easier. Now, finally, here it says that the class, I need to create a class called Cyan. And the color should be 00FFFF. So to create a class, guys, it's really easy. Whenever it says create a class, just put the dot, just put a full stop, and then the name of the class. So this one is Cyan. That's it. And then we simply open the braces. Now we can do that either by typing in there or we can either just type it from, I'm just gonna put a space there so it's easy to see. Over here, we've got our selectors. We can add a selector and just type dot cyan, press enter, and it will do the same thing. It will just open the braces for you, okay? So, and then just put the color. Now it doesn't say um, what the color is. So I'm just going to assume it's the font color um, because we're talking about styles, it's it, we've done the table part, so this is going to be styles. I'm just going to go to a font style, and I'm going to choose zero zero f f f f, and that's cyan. That's it. That's a class, and we're going to see how we can call the class once we attach our style sheet. So let's jump over. Okay, correct and complete this style sheet using the information about what well, we've done that already. Place your name, center number, and candidate number as a comment at the end of the style sheet. Save this style sheet with that name. Okay, take a screenshot showing the content of your style sheet. Okay, so first off, I need to put a comment. Now, if you can't remember how to put a comment, then I suggest you do this if you're using Dreamweaver. Just go to File, New, Style Sheet, a new CSS, and this new CSS has a comment here for you. There it is. So I'm just going to copy that, right click copy. I can delete that style sheet, don't need it, and paste it here. And where it's got CSS document, I can just write my details. There we go. And then I need to save this. So I'm going to go to File with a new name. So File, Save As. And I'm going to save this as spec style. There it is. And I'm going to put my D1234. Save. And then I need to take a screenshot of this. Now, does this fit on one screen? Well, on my one, just about no, because I've got my screen zoomed in. So what I'm going to do is, oh, what should we do here? Um, if I get rid of the properties, so if I go to window properties, remove that. There you go. I've got a bit more space. And that fits in there nicely now. Good. Okay, so screenshot, new. And I'm going to take a screenshot which includes the file name. Okay, so I've got my new file name there. There's everything there. I'm going to go to here, click enter EV2 for evidence 2 and paste it there. Now it's gone to the next page. So I'm just going to put that down to the next page. And that's, would that be? Yeah, I'm going to move it down. Okay, now don't worry about paper. Um, you think about your exam. So make sure that's nice and easy to read. There we go. And probably my next one is going to be on the next page anyway. Okay, quick save. Now, I hope I haven't missed anything out. So let's jump over to the question paper. So we've done all of this. Oh, look at that, 23 marks just for that style sheet. That's absolutely amazing. Okay, then it says, open the web page this in a suitable editing package. Well, that will be Dreamweaver. Replace the text, uh, a candidate that with your name, center number, and candidate number. Attach the style sheet spec style one to this web page. 
Then attach the style sheet you edited in step three to your web page so that it has a higher priority than the style sheet spec style one. Save your web page. Okay, so let's go back. So I can close that and I can close that. And now I'm going to go to file open and I'm going to open up the spec. That's it there, the spec web page, correct? There we go. And I'm going to get rid of my CSS designer from there. There we go. Okay, so the first thing is find where it says a candidate something, something, something. Ah, here it is. So a candidate. So I don't want a candidate. I'm going to write my name. And then center number. And then my candidate number, one, two, three, four. There we go. Then we want attach the style sheet spec style one. Okay, so we're going to attach what's known as an external style sheet. It's called an external style sheet because it's actually a CSS file. We're going to attach that file to this HTML. And I'm going to go to from here. Now, let me just put my properties back, window properties. Here we go. So down here in the class, this is this is my preferred method. I'm just going to click on where it says class, attach style sheet, and then browse. And I want to attach spec style one and click OK. Oh, there we go. Don't you just love it when you actually attach a style sheet and you actually see the change, the, the, the properties of the style sheet being implemented uh, and you know that it's working? That's really good. Great. OK, now it wants me to attach my style sheet, which I saved in step three, which was basically spec style and my um, candidate number. Now, and it wants that to be higher priority. So. Before we do that, if we just have a look, this is where the style sheet has been added Well, after I've attached it. It's in the head section. So there's the head section here. And we can see this here. This, this link is basically um, the tag or the property for a uh, attaching an external style sheet. And we want it to be, the next one I add, I want it higher priority. Now, you see these numbers here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that basically means that these numbers are the line numbers of the code and it's basically say which ones come after um, the other so line two comes after line one line three comes after line four so on and so forth so i need to make sure that my new style sheet that i'm going to attach goes after this line okay because if this one here says that h1 should be red and then the next line says h1 should be blue then the color of H1 will be blue because it's the last thing that it read. It's the last thing that was executed. So um, I'm just going to put my insertion point here. That's just out of me, the way that I normally do things, just to make sure that it's going to be added in the right place. And then if I click over here, go to the dirt class, attach style sheet, browse, and I'm going to attach this one and click OK. Now I oh, let, look at that now change that's great as i said i love it when things change okay now i need to make sure there we go this is the first one that i added and then my style sheet now comes after that so it starts on line five whether whereas the previous one starts on line four so this this one here is um, a higher hierarchy higher priority good that's worked and then it says save the web page uh, so File save. Does it say what to save it as? Oh, no. Nope. Save the web page. So just click on save. There we go. Okay. Use the class created in your style sheet to set the color of the text to Wara Digital Storage to Cyan. Okay, so we're going to find. Ah, it's a title. Tawara Digital Storage. So how do we attach? the class we made. Well, if we look down here where we attach the style sheet, and this is why I like using this area here to attach the style sheet, the class, because it just gives you students um, a, a central point where you find as many things as possible. So you attach the style sheets from here, but look at that. I've got that one there. That class which I made is there now. So I click on that and that should change the color to cyan. There we go. Okay. Place into the appropriate section of the correct web development area, well, web development layer, 
that's going to be the head section okay metadata to define the character to a uh, character set to utf8 metadata to include your name as the author of the web page and metadata to set the keywords to Tawara, TDS, DVD, and SSD. Okay, now I've already done uh, another paper and I've also got a tutorial which is on the head section. Okay, so make sure you watch that tutorial as well. Um, but anyway, let's get on with this one. So first of all, how do we set the, uh, the character set to UTF-8 or the char set? Well, if you can't remember, the easiest way, just like we did with the comment for CSS, create a new web page. File, new, and I'm gonna put HTML, click create, and look at that. It's got the metadata for the character set UTF-8 there, okay? And that's, so I'm just gonna copy that, close that web page, I don't need it. And in the head section, it doesn't matter where you put it, at the top or at the end, it's up to you. I'll put it after the style sheet, it doesn't really matter paste it there. If it said it wanted the character set of something else, let's say UTF-9 or ISO something, then you would just change whatever property is in here. Okay, so you can create a new uh, HTML web page and take that meta tag and it's there for you. If you can't remember to write the code. The next one says you're going to create a new one where the author is your name. Okay, metadata. So again, I'm going to show you this method here. I'm going to go to insert HTML and you've got here um, different things. So the viewport is a really uh, important one. These are one of the ones that you have to know. Okay, so you've got it here for you, but we don't need that one now. I'm going to click on meta and it says attribute name. I'm going to put author and then the author is me. Click OK. And there it is. It gives your metadata, the name as author, and the content is my name. Now I'm going to do the same. I could do the same with, the, uh, with um, uh, the keywords and just copy this and put keywords here and then put the keywords in the content. But I'm just going to do it again using the insert HTML. And here are the keywords already for you. So I'm just going to put the keywords, which is Tawara, comma, TDS, comma, DVD, comma, and SSD. And click OK. And there you go. It's put that meta tag there, keywords, name, and the content for me. Now, if it wanted the viewport as well, or it wanted the, uh, the scaling, the default scaling of the page so that it's um, for, uh, depending on what device each person is going to be using to uh, view your web page, and you wanted the scaling of one to one or two to, you can just do exactly the same thing. Just go to insert. Um, this isn't part of the paper, but it is part of the syllabus. So go to viewport and there it is. It adds it for you straight away. And you just change the scale. So if you wanted the scale of two, two times bigger, you put two. If you want half, you put 0 0.5, okay? But this wasn't actually required for this paper. So we get rid of it. Okay. Um, where are we up to? Right. Replace the text, place image here in the web page with the, ah, this is that image that we made, spec SSD. You edited in step one. So let's go back. And that probably goes in this big empty space here. Yes, there it is there. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to insert image. And we want spec SSD. There you go. That one there, that was 600 by 600. There it is. And it says, add appropriate alternate text to this image. So we're going to click on the image, go to the ALT property down here in the properties, and we're going to write uh, image of a, a solid state drive brackets SSD. When you're putting alternative text, please don't just put one word. Um, the, the whole concept is that if somebody's visually impaired, um, it would read or if that picture is not available, it will have this text there instead. Okay, so just putting one word doesn't really help. Um, add, so we've done that. So we've added the, appropriate, the alternative text. Right, save the web page, display the web page in your browser, take screenshot evidence and place this in your evidence document. 
Display the web page in your browser, take screenshot evidence and place this in your evidence document. Make sure that all the page can be seen. Now I've received a couple of uh, comments in some of the other tutorials which I've made saying, is it okay if we use two screenshots to the, because it doesn't fit or I can't resize my web page to fit on one page? And the answer is it's okay providing it doesn't have this comment that we've got here. So in this particular case, I have to use one screenshot and my whole web page has to be displayed in my browser window because it says make sure that the page can be seen. Um, so you have to read carefully. If it doesn't have that line, then you can make it two screenshots. All the text can be easily read and the address bar is fully visible. So let's go to create this screenshot. So I'm just going to click on file save. I'm going to go to now, please do not take a screenshot from your editor. You have to take the screenshot from a browser. So I'm just going to open this up. Double click on this. There it is. I'm going to bring this up here. Now, you can see this doesn't fit. So I'm going to hold the control button on my keyboard and move the wheel mouse, uh, the, the wheel on my mouse backwards. And forward. Can you see that actually fits nicely in my browser window? And that's perfect. Now, if you couldn't, let's say some of these pictures had a property where the width is 100% of the width of the cell, then you could do this by adjusting the width of the page. It actually makes everything. In fact, I prefer this. I prefer this. Why? Why am I going to use this screenshot instead? Because I can actually see this, the left and right borders of my browser window. Okay, and this just really makes it easy for the examiner to see that my page, um, it fits and it's 90%, the table's 90%, everything looks perfect, everything is readable. So I'm just going to take a screenshot. From the top, you have to take a screenshot from the top, which essentially displays up here the name of the web page, the URL of the web page, and your whole page nicely fitted inside one window. So let's go put that in our document. Did I close my Word document? Looks like I did. Okay, so let's just open that up. There we go. So I'm going to paste that there, EV3. Good, that fits nicely. And let's go to the question paper. Right, and then it says, take a copy of the HTML source code and place this in your evidence document. Now it says, a copy doesn't say a screenshot so since it says a copy i'm just going to close that there minimize that don't need that i'm going to take a copy of this so i'm just going to click in here Control a Control c not a screenshot we want a copy of the text i'm going to go again to the next page and i'm going to press Control v now, I'm going to get rid of this double line space. So you're all ICT students. You should know how to take away the, the line spacing. So I'm going to go to the paragraph, change that to zero, click OK. And it's using two pages. I'm not too, I don't like that too much. So I'm just going to move the top margin there, just so it just about fits there. Do the same with the bottom margin. Oh, look at that. It fits nicely on one page now. No, nope, it doesn't. It's moved up. And then I'm just going to do my left and right. Now, you don't have to do this. It's just I'm I'm very, I don't know. I like trying to get things to fit. Does that work? Oh, I've just got that one line. So can I take that down? Just there you go. I got it on one page. All right. So, yeah, as I said, you don't need to do this. Um, Actually, everything's gone out of whack now. Uh, my OCD is kicking in, so that's going to move down. I just need to move that up a bit. Okay, and that should fit on one page. So yes, perfect. Now, again, I, I've actually gone really close to the edge of the paper, so when I print this, I need to make sure that none of this is being cut off by my printer. Okay, now, again, it, my advice to you is don't do this. Um, leave, leave appropriate margins and let it go over two pages, that's fine. So, quick save. And now we go to our question paper. 
Okay, we're going to start now with spreadsheets. Okay, task three, spreadsheet. You're going to prepare an invoice using a spreadsheet for Tawara Digital Storage. This company makes and sells storage devices. All prices are in euros, which must be displayed to two decimal places. Make sure that you use efficient formulae. Okay, so a couple of really important bits of information here. The first one is you have to make sure everything is in euros and use efficient formulae. Now, I think they put this in just to make sure you don't use overcomplicated ways to try and get a correct outcome. There are specific formulas that you should know based on the syllabus and you should be using those formulas. I know um, if you do know another formula that will get, get the same result, why shouldn't you get the marks? Well, the mark sheet is specific and it's specific to the syllabus. So let's get started with this. Open and examine the files spec invoice.csv and spec ssd.csv in the spreadsheet package. I think that's the first step. So I want to go and examine these. So spec invoice. So spec invoice. Okay, not a lot here. Um, I'm just going to select these and double click so it just expands everything. Okay, so this is probably the, the spreadsheet we're going to be working on and we should populate somehow. Let's open up spec SSD. Uh -huh. And this is our data source. So I'm just going to expand these as well. Okay, so we've got things like code unit price capacity in gb and model so the code does look unique it is actually incrementing all the way down and then we've got things like unit price capacity and model and if we look at the invoice here we go model capacity and price that will oh unit price here you've got number of items so we're going to be pulling this this and this from that data set. Here, I think we're going to be asked at some point to add some, some data, I don't know what, and depending on how many items, it should calculate the total price by multiplying the unit price. The product code, I'm thinking that's where we're going to add the product code, and it should use that product code to pull the information from the data source. Um, that's going to be a total. I, I don't know about this big gap here. Okay, and then we've got um, some information. I don't know what that is. Okay, so we can start working on this now, I think. That makes a little bit of sense. Okay, so save the specimen, uh, the spec invoice.csv as a spreadsheet with the file name invoice, followed by your center number, candidate number, for example, that. Uh, merge cells A1 to F1, format the top of the spreadsheet, to look like this. Okay, it doesn't look like there's a lot of formatting this time, so hopefully I won't make any mistakes this time. Uh, place your name, center number, and candidate number left aligned in the footer. So let's just go and do this part here first. So first stop, I'm going to take that all the way up to F. I'm going to go to the home ribbon, and click on merge and center because it is centered. I'm going to expand the height of this to around about four times. And I've also got all of these here, all the columns approximately that size. So I'm just going to do that as well. And then I'm going to increase the size. Of, does it say what size that title should be? No, it doesn't. So I'm just going to expand that up until, oh, that's too much. I think about a little bit more. There. Okay. And then they really are i need to make sure this is aligned to the center as well so we're going to click on that so horizontally and vertically it's not bold so yeah that's pretty good that's uh, i don't have any rows which is um smaller in height than others so i can just move on so i'm going to add my name uh, and i also need to save this so i'm going to go to file save as Make sure this is an Excel workbook, and I'm going to call this invoice. Invoice underscore CY127. 
one, two, three, four. Nearly forgot that step. Save. Okay, so I've saved that. There it is up there. I've changed the first row, the title, and now I just need to add my details in the footer. So I'm going to go to View, Page Layout, go to the bottom, and I want to be on the footer on the left. Okay. Click inside the main body, and now I can go to View, Normal. Okay, now I have had uh, someone ask me, I, I add the footer and then I don't see it. You only see the footer and the headers when you go to File Print and you should see it in your print preview down here. So just to make sure that it's all working for you. Okay, let's go to the question paper. Now, so we've done eight, we've done nine. I don't think I've missed any steps. There really aren't that many steps here. Right, place functions in cells C9 to E9 to look up the model capacity and unit price of each item using the product code for the lookup value and the external file spec ssd.csv for the array. Make sure that if no data is entered in the product code column, then nothing is displayed in the cells C9 to E9. Okay, and that's 12 marks. Right, let's get started. So C9 to E9 is from here to here. So it's exactly what we predicted. We're going to use that data source to bring in this information here. And it says we use the product code, but there's nothing in the product code. So I'm going to be using um, a product code in this area here to make sure that my uh, functions work properly. So first of all, the data source is vertical. So I'm going to be looking up for the, um, the product code in a vertical manner. So this is going to be a VLOOKUP value. I'm just going to take a random one, SSD6. So I'll be using that as something random. And I'm just going to add SSD6 here. You don't have to. You can put any one you want, or you can just leave it blank. The only reason I'm putting something here is so that I can make sure that my formula is working. Okay, because if I'm not getting a result, I don't know if it's actually working. So I need to make sure I go and delete this afterwards. So from here, I'm going to go to the model. Now, first off, before I begin, I want to see which column the model's in. So if my data source is going to be these columns here, then my model is in one, two, three in the fourth column, capacity in the third, and unit price in the second. Okay. So that's going to be VLOOKUP equals to VLOOKUP. Now, I want you to notice, I'm going to do this in steps. I don't care about if this is blank, what this displays. I just want the VLOOKUP working first because even if you don't get the whole formula right, if you get part of the formula right, you will get part of the marks. So the VLOOKUP is going to look up the product code, comma. Now I want my table array, which is going to be from here. I'm going to click here, scroll down, shift, and click here to select all of this table. We can see automatically it makes this up here a an absolute reference. And I want the model. The model is in column four. So I'm going to click there, comma, four. And I want, comma, an exact match. So I want to put false. And let's press enter. Now I used SSD6, so I should get the Samsung 850 Pro. Let's have a look. There you go, that's worked. Now, before I do this one and this one, I need to get all of this one working because I know I've got the VLOOKUP working, that works fine. But I want to make sure when that is empty, I don't get that NA there. Or there should be nothing that should be blank. So the easiest way to do this is to check to see if this is empty, then we want this empty. If this is not empty, well, then we want the VLOOKUP result. So we're going to click on this formula here. <clears throat> and I'm going to modify it. I'm going to put this inside an if function. So I'm going to start with if, open brackets. And my if function is going to say if what's inside A9 equals to speech mark, speech marks. Now speech mark, speech marks basically means nothing. If there is nothing in A9, comma, then, and that 
statement is true. So basically, this part here is saying that what's inside A9 is blank. It's absolutely nothing. And if that statement is true, then I want nothing to be returned. So I use speech marks, speech marks. If this statement is false, it means there's something inside A9. And if there's something inside A9, the result is going to be the result of the VLOOKUP. So I just need to put close my if function bracket there. And that now should work. So let's try. Let's put SSD1. Perfect. And I delete that. Perfect. So now that I've done C9, I can do D9 and E9. Now, here's a common little mistake. I'm just going to put SSD6 in here again, just so I make sure I get results. Now, if I copy this over like this, because I, I, can always, I, can, I can predict straight away what's going to happen. You see, I don't get any results. And the reason is this. If I click on this one, we can see it's using the product code. But when I click on this one, it's using B9. And that's because I've used a relative reference for that A9. Okay, so as I, as I move that over, it turns to B9. So instead of copying it that way, I'm going to delete these. I don't want to make A9 an absolute reference because if I have to copy these down, and I think I'm going to have to, but that's why we've got this big gap, then that's always going to look up A9. So you're either going to do these formulas again, or you can copy the formula from here copy all of that, control C, press escape, and double click in here and paste it in there. Now, the only thing that we need to change is the column lookup. So the capacity we said, um, let's just leave it four for now. Let's just go have a look and see where the capacity is. So it's one, two, it's in column three. So I need to change that to from four to three. There you go. And then I'm going to double click in here and paste again the same formula. And I know the unit price is column two. And now I'm going to check this. So SSD6 is Samsung 850 Pro, capacity 1024, unit price 382. SSD6, 382 is the unit price, 1024, Samsung 850 Pro. And you could put another one in there just to check and make sure but I'm, I'm kind of comfortable with that one. Okay, so let's go to the question paper. Now, we've done all of 10. That's 12 marks, fantastic. Place in cell F9 a formula to multiply the number of items by the unit price. Make sure that if no data is entered in the number of items column, then no, nothing is displayed in cell F9. Okay, that looks like exactly the same thing. So F9 is this one here, which is the price. It's going to take whatever's inside this one here, which is nothing. So I'm just going to put a 10 in here. So I've got something to see a result. And it's going to multiply that with this, and that'll be our answer. So first of all, it's going to be equals to this one times that one. Perfect, but again, this is why it said, if that's blank, I don't want that zero there. So we're going to do, undo that. We're going to do exactly the same thing as before. We're going to add another if statement. So if, and we're going to check if what's inside this one here, B9 equals to nothing, comma. So we're saying B9 is empty. If that statement is true, then I want the result to be empty, comma. If that statement is false, we're going to assume something is inside there. And if there is something inside there, we're going to multiply it by E9. So let's close our if function. And there we go. Good. Let's check our question paper. Okay. Replicate the formula entered in steps 10 and 11 for rows 10 to 19. Okay. So I want to replicate what we did in 10 and 11, which is what we've done here, 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 and here. And we're going to copy all of that because it says replicate down to here. Now look at that, we get nothing here because all of these are empty. 
Okay, so that's great. So before we move on, we need to do some testing. I'm just going to put, let's say, SSD 6 again here. And if everything's correct, this should give me the same data. There we go. And if I put 10 here, perfect. So I, I think a good one to test with, so if I delete these ones, I'm going to test with SS and get rid of that one as well. Actually, leave that one there for now. I'm going to test with SSD 1. Why? Because as I've copied these down, then because all of these have got absolute references here for the, there you go, for the lookup array there, then they shouldn't move down. If they do move down, what have I got there? <clears throat> so let's just get rid of that and that as well. So that looks good. So if they do move down, it means something's wrong. And that basically means what? If it's not, if it doesn't have absolute references, as I've copied down, my table reference, instead of starting from here, from A2, it's going to go down to A3, A4, A5, A6. And if that's true, then it will not be able to find SSD1. So to make sure that everything's working, I'm going to use SSD1. SSD1. Yep. And in this one here, it should now find SSD1. If Yes, it does. So if I didn't have absolute references here, I wouldn't get the result here. Great. And I'm just going to put some uni items as well. 10 and 10. All works. Perfect. So I can get rid of these now because I'm comfortable with that. Everything works. Okay. Let's go back to question paper. <clears throat> so we've done number 12. Right now it says place in cell F21 a function to calculate the total of the price column. Apply appropriate formatting to cells 9 to 21. Okay. So I'm just going to go put again some values here. SSD1. Well, not there. Just so I can make sure everything works. I'm going to copy that down all the way up to 19. There you go. And because it's incrementing, it's done that. And I'm going to put the value 10 here. And I'm going to copy that down. Like that. So I have everything. It hasn't asked me to do this. But because I want a total here, I want to make sure that's working in F21. I'm going to do equals to sum of that. All right. So that's working. And now I need to format uh, appropriately. So anything which is currency needs to be euro so that no no i want the unit price i want the price i'm gonna hold the control button and that one have to be currency okay so we're going to go to our home section go up here this is one way of doing it more number formats i'm going to go to currency and from here i'm going to go down to euro and i'm just going to use the basic uh, euro the first one that pops up click ok and there you go, everything two decimal places. So the reason I put this uh, data in here is just so that I can make sure everything looks fine. I can see C is actually uh, cropping some data off there, but we'll check that when I have to. Okay, let's go to the question paper. So we've done that one as well. Now it says print your spreadsheet showing the formulae. Make sure it is in landscape orientation. The row and column headings are displayed. Grid lines are displayed the contents of all cells are fully visible. Okay, so now's the time I have to delete all of this because I don't want this to be seen. I'm going to go to my data, sorry, formulas, and I'm going to basically show my formulas up here. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And you can see my formulas are being chopped off. So I'm just going to, Click in the top left corner, double click between two columns. There you go. This makes sure everything is in everything is visible. Now it's in landscape or the row and column headings are displayed, grid lines are displayed. So I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to put borders. Because it wants the grid lines. There we go. Good. And now I'm going to go to print. So I'm going to select this because I only want this part here. File print. Now I've got the PDF printer because I'm not going to print this off. 
um, but you will choose your printer. Print active sheets. Now I'm going to print the selection. I'm going to make sure that my orientation is landscape. There we go. And now, what's it? Um, it's in landscape orientation. The row and column headings are displayed. So I'm going to go to page setup, go to sheet, and make sure I've got row and column headings selected. There they are at the top. Grid lines are displayed. Now, it doesn't say it has to be on one page. And it doesn't say it has to be on one page wide. So I can print as many pages as I like. This is why they want these um, labels at the top so they know where you put the formula. If you think that's a bit too big, you can scale it down a little bit, um, but there's absolutely no need to. Um, but if you did want to scale down and you wanted it on one page, which you wouldn't in this case because it will be too small. So I could say, let's say fits on one page or fits all columns on one page. That's going to be a little bit too small. OK, so we're not going to do that. No scaling. Um, that's actually three pages. That's not bad. That's pretty much okay. Let me try and get this on two pages, just for argument's sake. So just to show you some other things that you can do. I can go to custom scaling options, and instead of 100%, I'm going to make it 75%. Click OK. Yeah, and that's two pages. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Now, I'm only going to be happy with this. When I print this, I need to make sure all of this data is readable. If it's not readable and it's difficult to read, then just do no scaling. So for argument's sake, no scaling and print that off. You're finished. So I'm going to print that off. And I'm just going to put this here as, I don't know what this is, number 15. Uh, spreadsheet, uh, S sheet 15, question 15. Okay, and just print that off as a PDF. Um, you will print on the on, on a normal printer. Okay, let's go to the question paper. So I've done that. Now enter the address as shown and format it like this. Okay, so I have to be careful that I do this properly now. So let's go back. So let's go out of the show formulas. I'm going to select all of this, double click so it fits in nicely, and then I'm going to modify it afterwards just to make sure. So I want two on that line there, Tawara Technology Solutions. Tawara Technology Solutions. We've got capitalized first letter. Uh, let's just drag that out a bit. Okay, 32. Okay, can't pronounce that avenue. Tawara. I mean, a nice ex oh, no, just Tawara. A nice extension exercise was to would be to actually mail merge this information in, but mail merge is not part of the syllabus, so we can just ignore that. Six seven three. Okay, so that looks okay. It's um. A sensory font, it's aligned to the left, that's fine. And then it says, enter these product codes and number of items into the invoice. So I want SSD 18 and 34, 1 and 10. So I want SSD, SSD in capital letters, 18, SSD 34. Our number of units here is 1, number of units here is 10. Yeah, they put these numbers to make it um, easy for them to check. Okay, so I'm just going to adjust the column widths here so everything is visible. There we go. Great. And that looks good. So now it says, save your spreadsheet, print the entire spreadsheet showing the values. Make sure the... Print outfits on a single page. Great. Contents of all cells are fully visible. Grid lines are not displayed. Row and column headings are not displayed. Okay, so first step is I'm going to select all of that. Get rid of the grid lines. No border. I'm going to select that area there. You can just leave the whole page. It's going to fit anyway. File, print. Make, so I've got those headings there. I want to get rid of those. Row and column headings, none of that. 
uh, orientation I want portrait that fits on a single page absolutely even if I put this on the, on the active sheet exactly the same thing so that's why my details are at the bottom uh, contents are fully visible have I got anything chopped off let's just double check so the Evo here that works fine no nope, that looks good I'll print if I have missed something you know the drill just give me a just shout me out on it so that's going to be uh, S sheet 17 especially 17 and click save so again you will print that on a normal printer okay printing the evidence document make sure that your name center number and candidate number appear on every page of your evidence document save your evidence document print your evidence document well that's it that was short i'm actually surprised there because i was expecting um for it to actually have a chart there's no chart um so they probably have that in paper too so i've got to come back with specimen paper too as well but there's no chart there i would just save this one now my evidence document file print just for completion oh wherever i'm, I'm not too sure i've got to save but i'm just going to call that evidence okay so there you go that is actually complete so what did we learn about this uh, specimen paper well we've seen the class with uh, css We've seen the inclusion of meta tags. We've seen the inclusion of style sheets, external style sheets and the priority. So making sure the priority is there. We've seen in the spreadsheet, not too much, nothing really new. Just making sure that we know how to use the if statement to check if a cell is blank, that it will return a value which is blank. You can actually use the if error command, but I don't suggest you use that. I, I'm not too sure that's in the syllabus. So the whole idea is to use the if statement and then only if there's something in that cell will it implement the VLOOKUP. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something new. I hope I haven't made any mistakes. And if I have missed something out or made a mistake, make sure you call me out on it. Put it in the comments. I'll see you again in the next tutorial. Take care. Bye-bye.